Uh, my name is Yifeng Gu from UCRA. Uh, this is uh, our work with my advisor, Yi Zhou and our colleague, Jian Shi Gao from North Eastern University. And we, we would also like to thank Professor Tina Alias Irad from North Eastern University, who has provided available feedback for an earlier version of this draft. So this is our work called, called the Co-Evolution Model for Social Network Evolving and Opinion Migration. Uh, this, this work is motiva motivated by these following observations. First of all, almost all the social networks are evolving, which means the uh, nodes, like we have nodes coming in and edge coming in, we have the nodes being deleted. This is an example of the connection between the United States Congress in the recent 20 years. So we use each blue dot to represent a Democrat and each red dot to represent a Republican. So we see that back 20 years ago, there's, there were lots of overlap between these two parties. However, in the recent term, in the recent Congress, we see those clusters and people seldom have connections with each other for those two parties. On the other line of migration is their people's ideology. Uh, so the uh, political ideology is uh, people's opinions on political issues. Uh, so here we also plot the average ideology within each party in the time frame of 130 years. So we see that since the 1960s, the ideology for the two parties are also diverging, meaning that the Democrats are being more and more liberal and the Republicans are being more and more uh, conservative. So to put it mathematically, we can also use the agency matrix to denote the friendship between people. And also for ideology, we can use a real number. Uh, so a negative number means you are liberal or you're left on the left. A positive number means you are on the right or conservative. Uh, so those, both of them are evolving and we highlight the change in red. So here we see that uh, user two and user three have a connection in time, on time T2 and also their ideology, their political ideology also uh, migrating. So uh, the goal for this paper is to try to explain the phenomenon of this co-evolution. And we, we also build a model that can explain this trend and also the emergence of clusters and the divergence of people's opinions. In addition, we want to be able to uh, make predictions about the future. So given all the observation, observations from the history to up to now, can we predict what the people's ideology will look like in the next 10 years? Or will there be more clusters? Will people be more similar or less similar? Last but not least, we want to, if you're not happy with the current situation, is there any way to alleviate such uh, divergence? Or is there any way to intervene in such a phenomenon? Uh, so before we dive into the modeling part, let's uh, introduce some of the existing method. So how to how they deal with the um, co-evolution. So the co so um, the evolution happens in both ways. First is from the ideology to the network generation, which is called the network generation from this uh, the network generation point of view. Uh, so there is a very famous and widely accepted assumption called homophily, of where it basically says we are more likely to observe links between similar people. So in this example, if we define similar, similar people as if they have the same sign of ideology, if both of them are liberal or both of them are conservative, then we can build a six by six pairwise matrix by the similarity function we define. Uh, the other direction is from the network to ideology point of view, uh, so which is called ideology migration. Uh, so there's another set of very famous assumption which is called a social influence, where people are assumed to be influenced by their neighbors. And this is also quite common uh, because if you see some of your friends purchase some products or check in for an event and post them on a timeline, then you're more likely to be interested in, in them as well. Uh, so in this example, we see the migration of people's opinions, and this is somehow determined by the current friendship or co current connections. However, most of the existing approaches treat these two problems separately as orthogonal issues. In, so in this work, we propose a unified model that can capture both directions and put them in a, in a unified framework. So we are going to details of uh, both directions. So first, network generation. As I said, uh, people are assumed to have links to similar others. Uh, but the key problem is how to define similarity people. Uh, so if we represent uh, people by their opinions, the opinions is kind of a real number or vector in general. So the problems breaks down to the similarity definition vector space. Uh, so very naturally, there are two kinds of similarity measures. 
First one is based on their dot product or the inner product, where the similarity function between two users is the function of their inner product. So the xi and xj means the uh, latent opinion of user i and j. They, those can be vectors and real numbers as well. Another set of similarity measure is based on the Euclidean distance, where the similarity function, is, similarity score, is a function of their Euclidean distance. And which of them, which of them do you think is better? Uh, so I think it's very hard to reach to a conclusion at this stage. So what we'll do is to, we, com we come from some observations and use these observations to help us select the correct similarity function. Uh, so we notice that there are certain people that are very influential in the real, li in the real world, like celebrities or people with high, a large number of connections. Uh, so the similarity function will determine their degree, or in other words, their like, the influential factor. Uh, so what we observe is that the public, the opinion of the public is more like a, like a Gaussian distribution with mean on the on the center, uh, which means that like the, most people have an ideology of of a, 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 have a neutral ideology. So in order to in order for those influential people to have influence or connections or simply win the votes from those public, they need to stay. They really choose to stay in the center, or in other words they tend to have a moderate ideology. So the people with very extreme ideology, very left, very conservative, very liberal, are not likely to win lots of friends. Uh, so here we simply plot the potential friends of those two users in, uh, in this plot. So we have two users, user A and user B, with their two-dimensional ideology on the plot. Uh, so according to our observation, user B is likely, is likely to be uh, of the influential people because he's somewhere in the middle. And we plot the potential friends of those two users in the red and blue color uh, respectively, which means those people in the red, red uh, region are likely, to, are likely to be friends with user A because their similarity or their inner product is above some threshold. And we will do the same for user B. So we see from le on the left figure that user A has potential potentially more friends than B. This is because user A has a large norm than B. Uh, inner product will favor the vectors with large norm or large distance from the center, which contradicts our observation. But on the right, um, if we use the similarity based on the clean distance, then we see that user A and user B, regardless of their norm or their distance to the center, they have relatively similar regions of friends. So in this case, we will choose the right one, the uh, Euclidean distance-based similarity. Uh, and in order to model, to model the popularity of the users, we introduce another set of parameters, uh, which is called B sub i. Uh, it denotes the popularity of the user i. So in particular, uh, here is uh, we propose our uh, score function based on the Gaussian kernel. Uh, and we also call it gravity-based score function because this is related to the, to the law of gravi gravitation. So here, um, I mean, if the two people are similar, it means that xi minus xj is small, where the term inside the exponential function will be large. So they have a high chance of connecting to each other. So it's simply the reverse of the, um, of the inter interaction of force. So in order to generate a link, we flip a coin according to the probability, but it's not a fair coin in the sense that uh, we have a hyperparameter hyper which controls the, how likely those two people are, are to be friends. So for large D, it means it's, it makes it difficult to, have a, to generate a link. So large D will lead to a sparse, more sparse network. So here, here concludes our uh, network generation part. The other line of, of influence is the opinion migration, where the, the assumption is called social influence, and people are influenced by the neighbors. This is similar to the creatures in nature where, uh, for, for example, a flock of birds or a school of fish, I remember in sense the group is influenced by its around, surrounding neighbors. But in real life, in the social network, we don't have this notion of spatial neighbors. So instead, we, use, uh, we replace the notion of spatial neighbors by uh, their social neighbors, so where the information can propagate through their friendship links. Another choice is which of the factors are influenced by the neighbors. Is the position of the ideology directly influenced by the neighbors, or is the moving direction that is influenced by the neighbors? Uh, so suppose uh, you are standing on a one-way street. Oh, sorry, on, on the 
a one dimensional street, and you can only go left or right. You see a group of people coming from your left, running towards your right. And so you have two choices. First is to join them, to, 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 you go left, join the crowd, and run to the right with them. This is choice one. Uh, second choice, you wait a second, and you run right uh, from your current position. Uh, so uh, I think many, many people will agree that it's better off to start from your current position because you don't want to, you, you don't want to take a detour. So the uh, essential thing, thing here is that you observe the position of those people, which is on your left, and you also observe their direction, which is going to the right. So in this in this case, most people will adopt their direction instead of their position. So we want to the so we want the position to be influenced by their moving direction. And we assume that the duration is influenced by the neighbors or the, by, by the people who you observe. Uh, so here comes our uh, opinion pro propagation model. We use the, the notation state to denote the direction that the, per that the person is going. So we update the state uh, by the average of, the, of its neighbors. So the state n, uh, so, the, so the term in, inside the bracket means the average of, of his neighbors. And of course, we have some noise, which indicates whether this person will trust his neighbors or not. And sigma square is also another set of system level hyperparameter, which indicates the noise in the network. After directions are determined, we use the directions to control the position by simply applying the uh, very basic physics law, where the derivation, uh, derivative of the position with respect, time, with respect to time t is the direction of the of the direction that you are going. Uh, well, in the discrete form, you just every time you just take a step forward uh, by a lens of v towards the direction of the state. And then we close the loop by putting them together. So here is our call evolution model. We have those notations state as the directions the, the person is going, and x, who, uh, which is a vector, to denote ide ideology. And also we use the g to denote the network. So every time uh, we start from the ideology to generate a network from our first introduced uh, network generation model. And then we propagate the ideology by moving uh, forward by a step of state. And then we use the social influence assumption to update the direction that people are going. So we can, this is the iterative process that so we can iterate them again and again until uh, convergence or some, some threshold. Uh, before we go to the simulation part, there's a couple of things that we can control in, in the simulation setting. Uh, so we have the popularity of the actors, which is B, and D, which controls network sparsity, and also the noise in the propagation. So uh, under different settings, we observe different, totally different phenomenon of the network generation model. So here, uh, the red dot means the people with very high popularity factor. I think that's top 10 people with the highest B value. And uh, so on the left, on this setting, we see the emergence of several clusters. People are following the leader, the, the trend of their um, high popularity people. While on the right, people are just reaching a consensus and they are reaching uh, towards one unified direction. So in particular, if the noise is small, meaning that we have a small sigma square, but we have fewer friends, which means we have a large D, then we are likely to observe several uh, communities or people or opinions are likely to diverge. So here on time uh, 80, we see that there are obviously two clusters heading left and heading right, respectively. Well, if people have more friends, if the network sparsity family is small, then it's likely that we observe one huge cluster of people coming towards one direction. This is because people have more friends, they commu communicate their ideologies more clearly throughout the entire network and the information can propagate. So it's likely to have a consensus. Uh, if the noise is big, it simply means the network is more net random, so we end up with a very random network. So this is a summary of our, uh, the effect of our hyper hyper parameters in terms of the result. So back to our question at the beginning. If you're not happy with our uh, divergence or the emergence of clusters, is there any way to alleviate such phenomenon? So first, we can increase the number of friends. So as we said, uh, if we have more friends, then it's more likely to have a unified idea or consensus. 
so we can increase the number of friends, let people talk to more friends and talk to each other more frequently, then it's likely that people will have the same idea. Or we can play with the opinion leaders or the people, uh, very influential people, and let them help guide the people inside their community. So on the left figure, we show, um, we, f we try to flip the sign of those three influential people, uh, which are in red. And we see that gradually, the people on the left community will follow their direction and move them towards right. So at time 160, we see that, okay, this, although there are two communities, but they have the same opinion, so that they are becoming more and more similar. For application, we can also make prediction about the future. Uh, so the data we use is the co-sponsorship links between the United States legislators. Um, so uh, basically, a legislator can initialize a bill, and he will ask his friends to sign their names on the bill, which indicates support. Or um, um, so, so, so in this case, we add one co-sponsorship link between those two Congress people. And we collect data from a 34 years period of time, and we split, split them by months. So we end up with 382 time frames, and we have more than 2,000 legislators and more than 2 million co-sponsorship links. And data is public available on, the, on this website. Uh, so it's interesting to look at which are the most influential people in this network. So we try to infer the parameters according to the observation, which is the co-sponsorship links. So here, uh, we just sort the value for B and identify the top 10 people with the highest value of uh, the popularity score. So here we can see John Curry, who is the 68th United States Secretary of State. And we also identify Albert Kaur, who is the last Vice President of the United States. And also we have Mitch McConnell. Uh, he's been the majority leader of the Senate since uh, two years ago. So we see that there's an overlap between our detected opinion leaders or celebrities with our common sense. And also we are able to make prediction about the future co-sponsorship. So who will be a co-sponsor in the next couple of months? Uh, so here, we, what we do is we learn the parameters up to time T1, and we stop. And we run simulations from T1 to T2, and T2 is sometime in the future. And we use the attributes opinions in T2 to build networks, which indicates whether two people will be friends or uh, one of them will co-sponsor the, uh, the bill from the other. So we compare with a couple of baselines, including like the static, the network embedding method designed for static networks, and also the methods where they, do not, they don't consider the social, social influence, or some methods, they assume that the position of the opinion of people will propagate instead of their directions. Our model is in red and blue, so different uh, version of our similarity function. Uh, so we see that there's a large version of our method uh, compared to our baseline other baseline methods in terms of uh, classification, uh, in terms of link prediction IOC and also in the CG. Uh, so that's all for my talk. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.